Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, constructor inheritance in C++. The bottom line here is that constructors are not inherited in C++ by subclasses, but they are called. So let, let's take a look at that. Uh, so I'm going to create a class here called um, machine to be like a sort of generic superclass. And I'll give machine a constructor. So let's say machine like this. And um, let's, in the constructor, let's put a C out so we can see it running. Let's say machine no argument constructor called. And um, so, so now we can already create a machine object. We can instantiate an object from the machine class like that. And if we run this, we're going to see the machine constructor running. Let's create a subclass of machine. So let's say class vehicle. So um, a vehicle is a type of machine, unless it's a magic flying carpet. But uh, usually a vehicle is, is a kind of machine. Let's give this a constructor too. So I'll, I'll just copy this to save me some typing and rename machine in here to vehicle. And let's now create a vehicle, so vehicle. I'm giving the, the variable the same name as the class here, which I can do because um, my variable has a lowercase v and the class has an uppercase v. Um, some people find this confusing and avoid it, but I quite like it if you've just got one object of a class. Uh, because the, the class, um, because I'm giving it an uppercase first letter by my convention that I'm using, which is a common convention, um, and I give my variables lowercase first letters, and, and C++ is case sensitive, we are allowed to do this. So let's, let's run this now. And what we find is um, that, uh, well, actually I, I meant to... Um, I meant to make this extend machine. Let's do this. So vehicle is, is a subclass of machine. And also um, I want all this text actually in the constructor. Let's just change this. Okay. So let's run this now. So now when we actually create a vehicle, uh, the, the constructor of machine is called first. So we've only got one object here. We've only got a vehicle object, but um, because vehicle is now based on machine, uh, C++ will actually call the constructor of machine in order to construct vehicle, and it will call it before it calls the vehicle constructor. So C++ will call the default constructors of all the superclasses when it creates an object from a subclass. And that makes sense if you think about it. Uh, let's give machine a private int ID and the constructor of machine could initialize that ID. Let's set ID equal to naught because uh, if we didn't set it equal to something, it would just have garbage in it, whatever happened to be in the memory at that point. So we'll initialize it with zero. And let's also give machine a, a method called info which is just going to basically output the ID. So let's say C out ID and ID. And because machine has this info method, public info method, vehicle will inherit that method. So we can say vehicle.info. If we run this now, we find that for vehicle, ID is, in set, is indeed set to zero. So in vehicle, we can't refer to ID at all. It's private to machine. So we can't do stuff like this. Um, C++ won't let us. We're not allowed to refer to ID in vehicle because it's private in machine. And that means we can only refer to it within the defining brackets of the machine class. So if you run this, then we get an error. And for that reason, it's very handy that the constructors of superclasses are called because our um, machine constructor can initialize the private data of machine. And then the private ID of vehicle, uh, sorry, the ID of vehicle uh, will be initialized automatically. So let's just build this again and get rid of the error and run it. Whoops, what did I do? Um, whoops, no, I don't want to do that. 
Uh, so, uh, I've got an error. Let's just check the error. Initializer ID does not name a non-static. I forgot to save my program. That's the problem. Let's run it. Okay, so there we go. Right. So, uh, vehicle does have an ID. It does have an ID because its superclass machine had an ID. It's just that we, we can't refer to that ID anywhere in vehicle. We can output it with this method that was inherited from machine. That can refer to the ID. And the constructor of ID can initialize that ID. But in vehicle, we're not able to refer to the ID anywhere. Nevertheless, we can call a method in a superclass that refers to the private data of that superclass. And the vehicle does have an ID because it's, it's inherited it from machine. Let's um, take this class hierarchy one level further. I'm going to create a specialized type of vehicle, which I'll call car. Let's say public vehicle. So car now uh, is a subclass of vehicle, and it's an indirect subclass of machine. And I'll also give car a constructor. So I'll copy the vehicle one just to save some typing. And we can type car car car.info so now if, if we run this we find that C++ will call all the constructors of all the superclasses above car before call, calling the car constructor so first it calls the machine constructor which initializes the ID then it calls the vehicle constructor and we can see that running here finally it calls the car constructor the constructor of the object itself and again, car has an ID because it's indirect superclass at the top of the hierarchy here. Machine had an ID, but we couldn't refer to that in car because it's private in machine. C++ also allows us to specify which constructor in the superclass at any point in the hierarchy is actually run. So let's imagine, uh, well, let's not imagine it, but actually give machine a constructor that takes a int ID and uses that to initialize ID. So now we can do this. We can do machine, machine, pass it an ID. Let's say one, two, three. And of course we can call machine.info. So hopefully I've got this right. Let's run this. And we see that the ID of machine is one, two, three. But we can't call um, we can't we can't call that constructor with vehicle so if I change this to vehicle we can't call this parameterized constructor in vehicle because we only defined it in machine here and constructors are not inherited in C++ so they're called uh, the constructors of superclasses are called but they're not inherited we can't actually use it like this what we can do is we can specify in the vehicle constructor what um, constructor we want to run in its superclass. So let's give vehicle a constructor that takes a parameter, let's say int id. And I'm going to say here, um, well, I should change this actually. So this is the machine um, parameterized constructor. Hopefully I've spelled that right. And I'm going to copy that because it's so difficult to spell. And this is the vehicle parameterized constructor. Now, again, we've got um, a similar problem here to what we saw before, that we want, we want vehicle to have a constructor that looks like this, that accepts an ID parameter to initialize vehicle's ID with, which it inherits from machine. But we can't refer to ID directly in vehicle. We can't refer to this ID uh, because it's private to machine. But what we can do is we can specify here in the constructor initialization this that this vehicle constructor is going to run the machine constructor that takes a parameter uh, which accepts an ID. So now we've, we've defined this constructor for vehicle and we've said that this constructor will run the particular constructor in machine that takes a parameter. Let's try running this, see if this works and make sure we run it. Uh, so there we see that the vehicle has got an ID of one, two, three. So this ran this constructor, and this constructor now ran this constructor here. 
Um, we don't have to uh, call matching constructors uh, in the superclass. So here we've got a constructor that we've defined for vehicle, which takes an ID. And that's calling the constructor a machine, which takes an ID. But we could, for example, in car here, car, the superclass of car is vehicle, the direct superclass. And in car, we could specify that the no argument constructor calls the vehicle constructor that takes an ID. And we could give that an ID like um, 999. So if we construct a car here, car, car, oh uh, yeah, so we're calling the default constructor of car. Let's call car.info. And if we run this, if I've got this right, then it says um, car no argument constructor called, that's correct. And the ID of car is 999 because now we've said that the no argument constructor of car calls the vehicle constructor that accepts an ID. So it's running this constructor and the vehicle constructor that accepts an ID in turn is calling the machine constructor that accepts an ID. Notice that we can't call um, the indirect superclass constructor of car in the car constructor. So we can't do that, that's an error. We can only refer to this, the constructors of direct superclasses. So this, this does work as we've just seen. Um, so uh, to sum this all up, Constructors are not inherited in C++. You can't call the constructor of a superclass when you construct a subclass. But C++ will always run one of the constructors uh, in each of the superclasses of a particular class when you instantiate an object from that class. If we create a car, we're going to run a constructor in vehicle the direct superclass and we're going to run a constructor and machine. But at each step in the hierarchy you are allowed to specify which constructor will be called in the superclass. So that's it for this tutorial. To practice this try creating a multi-level class hierarchy with at least three different classes in it like this getting more and more specialized. And um, uh, add, add some uh, like text, like a C out to each of the constructors so that you can see that when you create an object, all of the constructors in the superclasses are running. And then try for each level in your class hierarchy specifying which constructor of um, two or more possible constructors that you define will be called when you construct an object from a particular class. So basically have a go at what I've done here and uh, that will that will make it a lot clearer in your mind if it's not clear already which would be completely understandable uh, and of course you'll get more practice with this when you start to write quite complicated programs yourself so that's it for this tutorial until next time happy coding <laughs> <laughs>